All right, Bramboro back with some Grand Tactician Civil War CSA campaign in the 1.06. We're into winter now. It's late November, right around Thanksgiving, and uh, we are being attacked in Missouri. Sterling Price is here at Lebanon. I think that's Lebanon. Yep. By the Army of Indiana, and we're outnumbered. 26,000 to a little over 15,000. So by a little over 10,000 men. But we're in a defense, we're, we're in a defensive stance. Uh, and let's see if we get a defensive situation in this battle. It's kind of 50-50. Um, I mean, what are we really fighting for here? Um, we're, I guess, over some supply depots. Uh, even if we win, we're going to take some casualties here. But either we fight here or we fight in Arkansas. You know, it doesn't make the Union armies go away, really. Yeah. Let's go ahead and uh, get in here and see what the map gives us. Interestingly, Army of the Mississippi is all the way over here now as well. Just barely out of reinforcement range. If, if the Army of the Mississippi were involved as well, yeah, I would have to retreat, I think. And even if we win this battle, we're going to use up our ammo, we're going to take some casualties, we're going to lose some readiness. And there will be this as yet unengaged force here very close also. And Rolla is now a Union IP, as is the Supply Depot. Army of Indiana may only retreat boop, that far. It's not like he has to run all the way back to St. Louis. But that's putting the cart before the horse. We have to defeat him first. And uh, that is by no means a foregone conclusion. Let's see what happens. be honest, a better move. I'm already second-guessing myself. <laughs> Might have been to go ahead and retreat and then getting some more artillery and cav uh, to Price's army. Might have been the better move for future operations, but we're in it now. <laughs> okay, we do have a defensive situation. This here, yeah, okay. So Dixon, the Dixon place is the uh, objective. And on this map, Wilson Creek map down here, this is some pretty, is, if I recall correctly, this is some pretty darn good defensive terrain. We've well, we've only got thir I thought we would have more points than this. I think that may be a function of uh, commanders. Like if, like an, an an engineering officer would probably have more points here. <laughs> well, we've got a nice slope here. Make them cross the creek. We can put some breastworks up here on the crest, and then we can throw forward skirmishers along the creek uh, so this is I think this is a pretty good spot where are the federal entry points there's one here I guess that's it it's right up here so right down the wire road to the wind place and then south straight to the I mean that's almost almost certainly his route but he's got another one you can come here and come down this foot track 
and then come down this way and try to cross. Yeah, that's actually a pretty that's actually a pretty likely route as well. So we're going to have to address that. And it, he could, he being AI George Morrell, could come down both ways. You know, he'll, his, uh, the Union Army will kind of spawn in somewhere up here, like so. And as they come down, some divisions may decide that their route to their assigned spot is quicker to go this way and some others may decide you know their left flank forces may decide that it's quicker to go this way so they could come in both directions I don't see any value in uh, <coughs> trying to defend further north because we'd be we'd have that same split problem and yeah that doesn't look too now we could defend here at this ford right along in here but we might get entirely flanked if they go this other route so and we don't have a big enough force we need to be able to cover both routes in one location and right back here by the objective is I think where we have to do that so we'll set up a defensive line here with with the engineering points we have and then if they come down this way we're just gonna have to reorient brigades and we'll set up using this fence line and do the best that we can. And what I'll do is uh, try to get some early warning here. I'm just going to put uh, Cav up here and he'll scout out and see which way they come. Okay, I'm going to get that set up and uh, get the time rolling and get the cat. Well, cab already moved back here because I gave an army wide order. Get the cab scouting and uh, I'll be back whenever we see which way Billy Yank is coming from. Okay, some Marmaduke's up here. Uh, his vision is curtailed because we're in the middle of uh, a thunderstorm. <laughs> in November so that's got to be pleasant but uh, yeah uh, federal brigade spotted coming down the wire road and then at least some of them are coming down this track for sure I'm moving them up here just to see if any continue this way and we get that uh, double axis uh, approach but at least some federals are coming on this other route and so I've already started moving uh, some brigades over here set up you know mainly defending toward the north but it looks like they're coming the other way so I had set up a few breastworks to join in with this fence line up here and I've got uh, pillows division coming over to these positions and I've also got one of Little's brigades coming over to this position for this board and I'll I'll probably just go ahead and move Little's other two brigades here over to about in this area. And we need to get the artillery turned around. There's still a ways off. There's plenty of time to do that. But that's how it's shaping up. Uh, it's kind of looking like there will be combat of some type down in this area. And this, this may be the focal point. Or the possibility is still open that we've got some Federals coming from both directions. That's where we're at.
Okay, well, it's uh, just about 1 o'clock in the afternoon on November 28th. we still got the thunderstorm going. Uh, we're holding the objective. We've got uh, most of our brigades over here kind of on this makeshift line. Got a few little breastworks that were here as a stopgap and wound up being necessary, but we're also using this fence. And we've got Pillow's uh, division over here on this fort. Uh, and that's Clark and Ross's uh, Texas Germans. And then we've got Little's division kind of here in the center. Have some skirms out. Uh, that was for a little bit of vision in the weather in the woods. Uh, but they are just now engaging. Got the artillery turned around and oriented this way. They're howitzers. They're not hugely long-ranged. But they should be able, well, I may need to move them over a little bit to get a little bit better coverage of this fort. We'll see how it turns out. Um, still have Reigns' division facing north, just in case. But Marmaduke saw at least six brigades marching down this track earlier. I, I think they're all over here. Uh, Marmaduke has come back, Fagan and Marmaduke. Uh, so the Cav is now here in a reserve position to go plug a gap wherever one shows up and do the best he can. And that's probably going to happen. Um, kind of the weakness we have in this position, besides just the fact that we're outnumbered by um, uh, over 10,000 men, is this center, brigade, uh, center division under Little, uh, these guys are still smooth bore armed two of them have two of them have springfield muskets and one of them i think fulkerson has actually got mixed muskets um so i'm kind of thinking bad things might happen to one or two of these brigades uh we do have reins over here for right now he's he's just Making sure the flank is okay, but I'm pretty sure Reigns' division will be able to come over and help as well. And then we've got Marmaduke back here, who's only got Springfield Muscatoons, but he can provide a fallback. Things are not all good for the Union either. Morell is up in here. He's been marching. I don't know what his cohesion, what his cohesion state is. This guy's low cohesion. Um... He has to come across Wilson's Creek. There's no two ways about it. And, uh, you know, units lose cohesion, lose tons of movement speed, and get all kinds of disorganized. Trying to cross at Ford's. Of course, he kind of had the same problem over here, too. It would have been a creek, not... Well, Terrell Creek, not the bigger Wilson's Creek. But uh, it would have had the same problem over here as well. So, hopefully that works to our advantage. Uh, quite frankly, I kind of want the AI to be messed up. <laughs> Here because we need to deal a lot of casualties uh, in this battle. So let's get time rolling and see how this transpires. You know, once skirms are engaged, they just kind of get real unresponsive. They will lay down, though. Go ahead and lay down. Just want them to kind of delay things as much as they can. I don't think any of these guys are in range of the arty yet. No, not yet. They'll come into play once uh, they try to come across these. And let's, yeah, let's take this time now. Let's move at least, well, let's just move them a little bit so they get 
slightly better coverage of that uh, right flank forward. Something like that really ought to do it. That's a lot of casualties for Skarms. 44. We've dealt more than that. Though. Okay, it looks like the Federals are starting their advance down the road toward the Ford. And pretty soon they're going to come within that howitzer range. How is our howitzer? Our Looks like they're doing, looks like they're full up for ammo. That's good. Yeah, 100% ammo for the artillery. Good stuff. Oh, these guys aren't messing around. Go ahead and pull in uh, Clark's skirmishers. Well, that's interesting. All I wanted you to do was just lay down where you were. <laughs> okay. Second Brigade is starting to take howitzer fire, it looks like. Firing. Firing. Good. Now, he's got two artillery battalions, but uh, Marmaduke did not spot either one of them, so I don't know where those guys ran off to. And one of those artillery was actually in a separate division, so that artillery might actually come down this other route by himself. In which case, these two uh, skirmisher units ought to be able to deal with it. Th those guys are just going to get messed up. Here, pull them in. Pull them in before they do something stupid. Okay, little. Let's let's move uh, Pierce just right over here in kind of a reserve position, right behind his buddies, like that. And Reigns, come on over here, and let's get uh, let's get one of your brigades kind of over here where Pierce was standing. And that way we can you'll be in a position to deliver some flanking fire with your Mississippis. And for now we'll just leave uh Waitman here. Here's another reserve. Okay. Now put your skirms out again. <laughs> See if they had rifles, they could fire. But they do not, therefore they cannot. Although it kind of looks like they're going to try. <laughs> mm. 
Maybe? No. What happens if I give him a fire order? It's either getting hung up in the river. That's what happens to pretty much all units around rivers. Oh, there's a little bit of fire. Yeah. Well, it's not going to do much, but it's going to do something. Meanwhile, it looks like Clark is... A He's actually uh, exercising some initiative coming up to this fence line. I don't think I'm against that. Good idea, Clark. You go, bro. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know if 2nd Brigade is going to be able to return fire. It's pretty long range. He's taking skirm fire in the flank. He's taking some uh, long range uh, Mississippi fire from Clark. He's taking some howitzer fire. Who is that? That is Hayes. Get a 2x. I think that'll be reasonably safe. See anything over here? Nope. Okay, Hayes is trying to advance. He's completely unsupported. Doesn't look like, I mean, he's not feuding. I've got feuds turned off. So, he's just kind of being thrown up here as a sacrificial lamb. Taking 250 casualties. Oh, now he wants to fire back. Ooh. Oh, taking some. Okay. Um. So his Mississippis are not really that great at that kind of range. So let's just have Clark kind of fall back. Maintain his range advantage. And they can't really follow him. There's no need for him to sit there and just take those losses. Even with the fence cover. Second Brigade realizes what's happening, so they disengage. Clark, stop. Nope, oh, here he comes again. Skirmishers over here on his flank again, if they'll move. Okay, we're 
Starting to get some advancing through the woods over here. There's a big cavalry brigade coming through. Nothing spotted over here. Uh, I did look in the HQ report uh, while I was deploying and moving and scouting and stuff. Uh, there are their army has seven infantry brigades, three cavalry brigades, and two artillery. One of which I think is horse artillery. So the organization of the two armies is pretty similar. They've, they've got more cav. But other than that, it's the same. Two artillery, seven infantry, and we have one cav, they have three. Of course, their brigades are bigger than ours. Um or at least are estimated to be full size, about 3,000 men. Okay, Hayes has taken 750 casualties now. We've taken about 245. That's a good ratio. Yeah, Clark has not taken any additional fires. Uh, any additional casualties, he is uh, delivering unreturned fire right now. He is burning ammo. Wilkerson Skirm's doing a fine job there with their mixed muskets. <laughs> <laughs> Continuing to get a little advance here uh, through the woods, so they're tired. That works in our favor. Oh, Texas Germans could be joining into this. They were just at long range. Just rotate their facing just a little bit. Sort of. They're doing weird things in the breastworks. What is so hard about just rotating a little bit to your left instead of doing this complicated parade get ground maneuver in the middle of your breastworks? But yeah, like that. Why couldn't you do that the first time? <laughs> Yeah, I don't think anything's coming this way. Okay. One brigade down. Nine to go. <laughs> Next, please. Now serving. Next customer. Thirteen hundred casualties. Good. Okay, more of that. More one-sided slaughter in the rainstorm. They're coming, they're just in woods and they're tired, so it's really slow. I'm slogging through that underbrush and it's probably muddy in there. I wonder if weather actually increases uh, fatigue. I don't know if ever, I don't think I've ever fully read this tooltip. Heavy rain, lightning, and winds would be better to stay in camp. Yeah, well, I didn't start this fight. That's Morel's fault. Roads and fields turn into mud. Yeah, slowing everything down. Yeah, so it does. It does have a slowing effect. Cunning general with crack troops may use these conditions to hide troop movement. Well, I don't think they have crack troops, and I'm going to go out on a limb and guess that Morel isn't very cunning. 
Very bad for men out in the field. Storm hinders visibility. Yeah, slower, uh, shorter vision ranges. Sure. Who would fight in such a weather? George Morrell would. And Price is obliged to do so as well. Okay, what's your next move, George? Let's speed up a little bit. Since we have a lull, how about uh, let's pull focus and skirms back in for ammo. And how about we put some Mississippi armed. You know, Clark's got credit for fence cover here. I don't see any particular reason to move him back up onto the fence for the moment. So we'll just leave these guys where they are. And let's have these guys put their skirms back out. Maybe they can harass this uh, cab up here in these woods. Maybe. We'll see. So, Ross, can you just rotate back into your breastworks without being all... No. He's going to do. <laughs> I think the Germans are about to show off their uh, parade. No, he's just rotating. That's cool. Where is he? Okay. Maybe during that short uh, 10 minute period, they broke out their uh, drill manual and read it, reread that chapter. <laughs> oh, that's how we do it. Okay, what are you guys doing up here? You're just kind of blobbing. Trying to get yourselves all sorted in the mud. Okay. Speed up. What are you actually shooting at? Okay, that's fine. So, interestingly, theoretically, that cav unit is not inside that howitzer's firing art, which is shown here, yet he's firing at it. So, I don't know if this guy's got... Yeah, I don't know if he's got vision. I don't particularly mind him saving ammo either, so that's okay. You know what? Artillery ammo is not infinite. I'm just going to turn... I'm just going to turn them off. Let them save ammo until they're ready to move. Which looks like it's going to be pretty soon. Let's let, uh, let's let this unit get down close. You know, somewhere down in here. He's coming toward that forward. When he gets right around here, we'll, we'll open the arty back up on him. Oh. There's some calf trying to make a move. See what Sol Ross and the Germans have to say about that. Here, let's go shoot at him now. So, there you go. Uh, they're still forming up, see? This is their objective, and they're forming up, but just in assuming their desired formation, this brigade right here 
is going to be hung way out here with his uh, flank right on the riverbank. Which sounds like a great spot for Mosby to do a little target practice. I'm just going to scooch him up just a little bit. Just a little bit. Okay, Moss's detachment's doing pretty good there. So we'll let him uh, stand for a little while, defending the fort. And then as soon as we're ready to pull him back, then uh, the full brigade will be able to shoot on the first calf. That'll work out. Yeah. The second brigade is about to take some Mississippi fire in the flank. Oh, there's their horse artillery. It's finally shown up. Actually, is that horse already? No, wrong guy. Is that horse already in? It is. Let's go counter battery on the artillery. Take out that uh, Italian. Parsons is in action here now. Good. Let's just rotate these guys so they don't get that flank debuff. Alright, let's go ahead and uh, pull Ross's uh, skirms in, since he's getting a little bit of a flank debuff there. This cab is already wavering. Pull those skirmishers in. Uh, there he is. <laughs> I guess that was a rainstorm. What the, is that? Because of rainstorm? That's weird. Nope, somebody got wounded. Bled so. Oh, one of the, uh, okay, I think our howitzers are taking some counter-battery. Yeah, they are. Not a whole lot, but Bledsoe has been wounded. Doesn't look like they're doing that much to the first battery, either. Okay. So far, Parsons is delivering basically unreturned fire. Okay. I don't think anything's happening over here. Let's just go ahead and... Uh, we'll bring away from over. Texans over here are getting shots, but I don't know if they're really delivering that much fire between the blinking in and out in the uh, weather. 
because they're just right at the ragged edge of uh, their range. I mean, Clark has taken a little bit of losses, but not much more. He's getting pretty low on ammo, though. That's a little worrisome. Okay, those guys broke. That's just a detachment, though. 2nd Brigade has taken 650 losses. Oh! Okay. Yeah, it's uh, November, so sunset comes pretty early. Well, that's actually good news for Clark. <laughs> Who's back up to 45 rounds per man. Okay. Well, uh, I think we'll probably just keep the positions as they were, except maybe get some of these skirmishers kind of sorted out. This is These are Pierce's skirms. Let's just put them right here. Fine. And we'll just get Waitman's uh, get Waitman's brigade over here. And we'll just leave Waitman's skirms there and Parsons. We don't need two skirmishers over here, so let's get Waitman's skirmishers. And we'll, we'll just put them right behind them, so that they can just join back up as soon as time starts rolling. Okay, I think that's fine. I think Little's division is fine. And I think Pillow's division is fine. Let's just put this battery. Let's just adjust the battery a little bit. And that's fine. Okay. And what if we put this battery about like this? Nope. Yeah, all right. Fine. So. Okay. Day two. Seven o'clock in the morning. Apparently it's still raining. put Ross's skirms out just to get a little bit more vision and see if that Cav Brigade is even still there. I don't think he is. I think, yeah, first Cav is back up here now. Keep this skirm line through here because these are musket armed brigades back here. I'd rather them just feed skirms ahead because otherwise they might get in a situation where they're getting fired upon and not able to return fire. Okay. Um. Who do you 
Three blocks. Daniels. Pull those guys in. Put, I did put detachments out. Here, just run over here, just for vision purposes. See if there's anything else over here. I don't think so, but... Are these guys still in counter battery? They are. Yet they're shooting at regular infantry brigades, and I'm not against that. Well, I'm not sure they can see that horse artillery. Laying Pierce's brigade down will help their artillery line of sight. Doesn't look, yeah, it doesn't look like it. I think they're starting to pull back. Maybe? We're getting kind of close up here. Quite yet. Other units are coming forward. Let's get Parsons over about like this. up closer to his brigades. As soon as Parsons is up there, we'll pull these skirms in to give uh, Parsons a clear field of fire. Skirms out here again, just to get us a little bit more vision up in here. We've lost sight of the uh, artillery battery, apparently. Looks like Hayes is sending some guys to reman some guns. These guys may have, uh, yeah, I think uh, this battery routed. Yes. Nope. 
more guys coming up. Uh, let's get uh, let's get Clark up on this fence. And let's have Texas Germans go ahead and cross the creek over here. Get the skirmish just to kind of cover his crossing, maybe. Hello, come on up. Oh, well, don't go that way. You know what? Your pillow. <laughs> if you get your ass shot off going the long way around, I'm not going to cry. Pillar just popped over here. I think the twenty six thousand man uh, army of Indiana? Is it Indiana? I believe that they are calling it a day. Cab over here. Okay. Ross got across the river all right. That's not what I want you to do. Why are you? I think he's still kind of in column mode because of crossing the ford. Let's just let him assume his position, assume his line position. doing here. Yeah, Focus and Skirms aren't too happy. Go ahead and pull them in. Okay, how about now? That's better. Marmaduke's only got Springfield Muscatoons. Mounted fire against a non-wavering infantry brigade may be a bad idea. It's a pretty good rear guard action he's doing there.
Okay. I, I don't know if we're going to be able to catch anybody. Which means that the battle may actually go on until nightfall and they withdraw overnight. So, uh, I'm going to put a cut in here. And then I'll cut back in if anything interesting happens. Kind of thinking there may not be. Okay. So it's going to wind up being another minor victory, but under the circumstances, I think I'm cool with that. And uh, here we go. 6,000 to about 500. So what is that? A 12 to 1 uh, casualty ratio. And, uh, I mean, we, you know, you can say, well, that's lopsided and the AI didn't do a good job, but, I mean, you look at the position, what else was we going to do? Um, I think it would have been a pretty similar story over on the left flank uh, across Terrell Creek. Uh, you know, he had to come through choke points and across water no matter which way he came. And uh, so he, old George Morrell was kind of in a no-win situation there. And I can't find my mouse pointer. There it is. Okay. Let's see how old uh, Marmaduke and the artillery did there. I think our guys did a fine job. Okay, pretty, pretty evenly spread for casualties inflicted. Pillow's division over on the right, Clark and Ross, 1600, they did the most. Almost all of it probably from Clark. Well, a lot of it, but uh, the Texans did a pretty nice job there on the far right. Little, not as much, because uh, this is the these are the smoothbore guys with mixed and Springfield muskets. Fulgerson did a nice job. I think a lot of that was his skirms. Fulgerson's skirmishers with their mixed muskets uh, did pretty well there in the center, kind of shooting left, shooting right. And, uh, yeah, okay, yeah, the, the, the Missouri State Guard, yeah, Parsons did a nice job, too. Almost a thousand casualties from that Mississippi Armed Brigade. And Slack is the arty. 250, not bad. Including a pretty fair amount on of artillery casualties, I think they did counter battery and break that horse artillery. It just wasn't in vision in the rain when it occurred. Right. So good job Price and not very many casualties which is probably pretty important because we've got the Army of the Mississippi right behind uh, the Army of Indiana, and Price may have to f fight again very soon. We'll just go back out in the campaign map and see how we did for captured weapons. And if we capture some, I think uh, some are going to go to Little's Division there. Fulkerson and uh, those guys. It's only fair, right? I mean, they captured them. <laughs> 872 captured. Nice. Men. And let's see, we captured uh, about 3,000 uh, small arms and eight more artillery. Yeah, Colonel Hayes loses face. I should say so. He's, that, that was that brigade that came up right out in front, unsupported at the very beginning. So that makes some sense.
I don't think we got any parrots there. I think it's the same eight I had before. And no Springfield rifle muskets. Maybe not a Duntan. No Mississippis. Yeah, I don't think we got much there. <clears throat> I think I think we just captured 3,300 Springfield muskets. <laughs> I think that's what we got there. Which kind of makes sense. They had range problems, didn't they? That said, even Springfield muskets would be an improvement for Fulkerson, who has mixed muskets. So I will at least do that. I wonder if it'll let me do it now. Looks like a yes. There you go. Now you at least got that, which means you get a you get a bayonet and you get buck and ball ammo. Okay, well, I think that that will do for this episode. Successful battle here in uh, southern Missouri. If you like what we're doing with the channel, if you like the content, then leave a like, leave a comment, maybe even subscribe. But at any rate, thank you very, very much for watching. I appreciate it.